Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for watching Ask Sarah the Merry Christmas Edition. Hey everybody, I hope you had a wonderful and ha happy holidays, Merry Christmas or whatever holiday that you celebrate. Um, even though Tuesday nights are our usual show and it is Christmas, we didn't want to miss out on the show. And so I'm going to be giving you a really quick little studio tour. Um, I'm going to be talking about some of the background that is so sweetness. And then we'll be showing a video that we shot earlier this year. I believe it was from February showing how I design a sewing, uh, sewing pattern from start to finish. So let's start off with the studio tour. Um, Danny's going to zoom out just so you can see our whole studio, which I mean, isn't a whole lot. It's a really small room. I share this room. So half of the room is mine. Half the room is Danny's. Um, normally my sewing machine rests over here. When we do our live shows, I have it on the ground right in front of me, like kind of to the left of where my feet are. Um, my computer and my monitor are right over here. And I have um, my mat over here. This is where we do for our live shows, all of our overhead shots. And when I'm um, taking photographs for my set photos for the sewing patterns, I take those with the cameras right over here. So I have a small working space, but everything is within easy reach. So I've got, um, again, my sewing machine here. Um, I have an ironing mat with my iron over here. I do have a regular full-sized ironing board, but I only bring it out for prepping pieces for working on patterns. So um, let me give you the, the quick tour. As you can see behind me, um, this door, we usually have it open, but I've got some of my bags hanging off the door. Um, my Tula Pink stash is um, from here to the ceiling, um, I have Ikea Billy bookcases, and so the bookcases go all the way to the ceiling, basically. Um, I've got bins with um, blenders and solids over here. I've got, as you can see, some of my bags that you normally see um, as my backdrop for filming the live shows, and then I've got some more fabric down here. So um, I don't have a, a ton of, as you can see from the front of the camera, these cabinets over here are for Danny's use. I've got one cabinet over there, which is super messy. I need to organize it better, certainly. Um, but this is our whole studio. So this is the mic that we use when Danny's on the live show with me. When I'm on the live shows by myself, I have a lavalier mic, which I clip on underneath my shirt usually. Um, what else? We've got some lights. So um, the camera that I'm looking straight at um, over here has a ring light around it. So that's that's in front of us. And then we've got one more light in the corner over there. So. We make it work with the space that we have. Um, I'm sure I'd be doing a lot, a lot more running around if it was a bigger room, but um, it seems to work. I just need to keep myself um, uh, organized and clean up the room periodically because um, you can't see it from the camera, but I've got tons of stuff on the floor behind me, just pattern pieces, a couple stacks of fabric, some books. So that tends to get on my nerves. I can only let it go for maybe about a week or so, and then I've got to get all the stuff off the floor, and then I feel much better, but then it always goes back um, to what it was being the mess over here. So um, I wanted to also talk to you a little bit about um, the history that is so sweetness. I've touched on certain things in the past on the live shows, but I'd fig I figured um, hopefully you're enjoying your after Christmas dinner or lunch, depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, but I just thought I'd talk to you a little bit about my background in case you haven't heard some of these things before. So So Sweetness started in fall of 2010. It was September actually, and it started as a blog. So I know these days blogs aren't as big as what they used to be, but my blog was basically a website. Um, it was kind of like um, I used it as journal entries for the sewing projects that I made. So. I'd post photographs of projects that I'd made. I'd type a little story about um, what I was making, what fabrics I used, those kinds of things. And um, I had a friend who had a website at the time called Amy Lou Who, and every Friday she had a linky party. So a linky party means that I could upload a little thumbnail picture of the sewing project that I finished each week and link it to my blog. Um, so I'd be really excited um, to get my sewing project uh, finished during the week and I get up early Friday morning so I could be among the first to post my project in my friend Amy's linky party. And this was a great way to, to meet other sewing friends online because people commented on my blog post and then I could see other people's finishes as well. So it was a really nice 
way to meet new sewing friends and see the projects they were making and I was really inspired that way. So um, I started off making quilty type projects because my two friends were making quilts. At the beginning I really didn't know about quilts or quilt making and I thought there was um, for instance uh, a, the right kind of batting, the right kind of ruler and I was really nervous and worried about getting these correct tools for making quilts and since then I've come to realize there's usually no right or wrong. Everyone has their own preference be it wool batting, 100% um, cotton batting or what have you. So I learned a lot. Um, I'm still learning new things every day but um, I tend to make maybe um, two to three quilts a year depending on what else is going on. Um, but um, that's where I'm at as far as uh, quilt making which is uh, definitely taking a back seat to the bag making. Um, but um, so after the blog started going I was contacted by um, someone in the marketing department at Pellon who you probably know makes interfacings that you may be using for your bags and they asked me to, to consider writing free projects for their website which is pellonprojects.com so over the years I've written about 12 projects for the Pellon website they were free patterns available on their website and these were my very earliest patterns so at the time I didn't know how to use or have the software that I have today for drafting my pattern pieces on the computer so back then I was drawing um, all of my pattern pieces out by hand and if it was a bigger pattern piece it would be drawing them out on newspaper or a bigger piece of paper and I was actually believe it or not mailing these pattern pieces in the mail to Pellon and they formatted them on their website in a certain way um, which is a little bit different than I'm using today you're used to downloading a PDF pattern and having the actual pieces uh, my patterns in those days on the Pellon website were formatted by Pellon on true grid which is um, one inch squares so I feel like definitely a bit prehistoric compared to, to what I'm working with today but um, I'm definitely grateful for those early patterns that I wrote for Pellon because it got me started um, it got me practicing writing patterns um, developing my writing style and eventually um, drafting patterns on the computer which is um, how they look today so um, that all started Christmas of 2011 is when I was first first approached by Pellon. I was really um, excited. It was um, a brand new journey and a brand new challenge. And while while I was going through that process of writing the free patterns for Pellon, I started working on my first book. So my first book was called Win uh, Big City Bags. Um, I had a friend that was working on a quilt book for the same publisher, who, um, and the publisher is called Martingale Publishing. I had a friend that was working on a quilt book for them at the time, and we were just talking through email about the process of uh, submitting a book proposal and she encouraged me to do that and so I did. I didn't have a lot of, um, um, I wasn't certain that I would get accepted because I was sort of new in the process but I submitted my book proposal which is depending on your publisher um, what my book proposal looked like was that I finished three complete projects with um, instructions and step photos and I also sent them photographs of the completed projects and then I had, um, I don't remember, it might have been 12 or 20 um, ideas for ideas and sketches for additional projects that could be in the book. So I turned the proposal in. I got an email back from the acquisitions editor and she said that she check with her editor and let me know and the process can sometimes take several weeks. So I thought, okay, they got my proposal, that's good and I'm sure I'll hear something soon. And about an hour later, I got an email back that um, they were definitely interested in the book. And I was I was floored because I was, like I said, I was new to the process. And um, knowing that they had accepted my book proposal was just amazing. So um, uh, writing a craft book generally takes um, uh, about 12 months. And that's what uh, the amount of time that I had to write Big City Bags. So I wrote all the patterns, had them tested, and turned in. You have to send them the finished projects so that they can photograph them in-house for the book. So that was all really exciting. Um, um, in between books, because I've written two books, I designed two lines of fabric for art gallery fabrics. Um, the names of the fabric lines were Jungle Avenue, which was kind of like a city-inspired, um, Chicago-inspired um, uh, line of fabric, which featured um, buildings in Chicago, elephants. I had a text print. I had a polka dot because you know I love polka dots. Um, the second line of fabric that I designed for them was Fantasia, which was unicorns and 
um, you know, florals and all sorts of different things um, in relation to the unicorns. So I had a great time and it was a great learning experience designing the fabric, but um, since then I have um, decided that designing patterns and designing fabric are both full-time jobs and I wanted to do um, the best that I could at one of them and so I chose patterns because I love writing patterns. Um, so um, after that I, I wrote my second book, uh, Windy City Bags. I took about six months to write that book because uh, my deadline was much shorter and um, I admit it was a lot of uh, getting takeout food for dinner and those kinds of things but um, glad glad when I finally got to mail my projects in and that process was over. Um, so that's sort of the creative journey up until that point. Um, my background besides that, I'm not formally trained in sewing. Um, I went to college um, to North Park University, which is a small uh, liberal arts college in Chicago, and I um, studied advertising and art. I took a ton of art classes. I wasn't super great at um, any one um, media and art, but um, I, I guess it was, I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to do with my life and I just figured I was always creative and so I'd go with art. Um, after I graduated college, I wasn't able to find a job in my field and so I ended up working in pet stores for 14 years. Um, I have two kids, which you probably know, William and Violet. William's about to turn 12 and Violet is 10 and after I had Violet, I developed an allergy to anything with fur which was kind of a problem working in a pet store since we also sold uh, small animals and um, we had uh, cat adoptions and, and things like that. So I, after that allergy um, came up, I was relegated to taking care of the reptiles and the fish. So cleaning tons of fish tanks. I was an expert at cleaning fish tanks. Those, those tanks were spotless. Um, I also fed, uh, I, I uh, wrangled a lot of crickets because a lot of the reptiles and also tarantulas that we sold, um, that's what they ate. Um, but thank goodness for sewing because, um, you know, taking care of crickets and cleaning fish tanks wasn't, uh, it was very calming certainly with two young children, but wasn't exactly uh, where, where I planned to be going. So thank goodness for the sewing. And um, as, as you know, uh, we started doing the live shows and our videos last year, which has been totally amazing. And it's really changed my life because I feel like um, before we started doing the videos and the live shows, um, I was writing sewing patterns and I was putting them out into the world. But after that, um, unless someone made the project and posted a photo online, I didn't have a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one connection with the people that were working with my patterns. But since we have the live shows and the videos now, and our Facebook group has gone, um, grown over the years, um, I feel like I know so many of you by name or um, you know familiar avatars if you're posting in the Facebook group. and. Um, I enjoy connecting with a lot of you via email and I just love, um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in the past, but um, because so many of you jump on the live shows up to an hour before the shows start, while I'm practicing and while Danny's setting up before the shows, we usually set up about an hour before the shows and Danny's computer screens, he's got two really large computer screens and while I'm practicing, um, he's got everything set up and I can see all of the comments come through. So people jumping on the chat either on Facebook or YouTube and they're asking, um, oh, Melissa, how are you doing? Or um, are you feeling better? Or, or did you finish that project? Or, oh, hey, hey, I'm Amy from California. I see all those comments come through. Um, I love that you all are able to make connections with each other and I've enjoyed making connections with you um, through the shows if I see um, your comment come up on the screen or if I um, reply to a post in the Facebook group. Um, that's been the true joy. So. Um, thanks for being part of the community. Um, we have a lot of fun things planned for 2019. We have the book club. Um, we're going to be doing um, sewing related, um, not book reviews, but we're going to be talking about books on the live shows. I have some free projects and videos planned to go along with book club. Uh, we're going to be doing later on in the year a free video quilt along. I'm excited about that as well. And of course, um, the usual bag patterns and videos that you've come to expect. So. Um, I, I hope you've had a wonderful holiday. I'm looking forward to 2019. Um, I hope you are too. I hope you have some um, exciting things personally planned for yourself in 2019. And I look forward to working on some new um, bags and now quilt projects with you. So um, to close out our, our Christmas edition of Ask Sarah, 
I won't be answering questions like I normally do, but we decided to play this video that we shot earlier in the year. I believe it was from February. And this is my process, my current process for designing a pattern from start to finish. So from the initial sketch all the way up until the pattern is released. And I hope you enjoy and Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everybody. Hey bag ladies, so I've had a lot of requests for some more behind the scenes views and so today I wanted to show you all the process behind getting a sewing pattern ready from start to finish. And so my very first step is usually I like to sit on the couch or lay in bed, take a piece of scrap paper and a pen and just sketch out um, a very basic drawing of what I want the finished bag to look like. So here's one of my recent sketches. As you can see, the drawing of the bag is very rudimentary. I'm not so good at drawing. And so um, I've drawn the bag. In my head, it's definitely more fl fleshed out how it looks, but um, I've got the measurements approximately of what I want the bag to look like just based on past bags, how I know um, the sizing comes into play. This is about where I'm shooting for as far as the size of the finished bag. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and written down some fabric requirements. So um, I'm very much estimating in my head how much exterior and lining fabric. I already know which interfacings I'll be using. And again, I'm just estimating um, what those amounts will be. So I've got my foam interfacing, my shape flex, and also the Peltex down here. Um, and usually my Peltex is listed as optional. And then I'll also go ahead and write down any purse hardware zippers or any other things that I think that I'll need. And again, the zipper is usually optional. Um, that'll be more specific when I get down to actually sewing the bag. So as you can see, the second half of the page, I've written down my exterior and lining pattern pieces and which pieces I think I'll need for each one. And often they'll need actual physical pattern pieces and sometimes they'll be measurements. So for example, this accordion piece right here, that'll probably be a rectangle. So that'll be a measurement in the pattern instead of an actual template represented. So um, that's the start to the brand new pattern. And then sometimes depending on what kind of pattern I'm working on, but if it's a short one, I like to do this. So on the back of the paper, I've gone ahead and written down um, the different sections in the pattern. And I've also written notes down for myself that it, so that I don't forget to, to add a certain step in the pattern because um, sometimes I get really excited about a new idea and I know that I want, um, for example, some snaps in this portion, but sometimes when I get down to turning the computer down, computer on and starting to write, I'll forget to add the snaps. So I wrote myself little notes for each section. Um, depending on the pattern, most of my pattern instructions, each section is between three steps to 15 steps. So again, these are just the, the sections written out and they'll each have um, a list of steps underneath them. So after I have these all sketched out, I'll take myself over to the computer and open up my software and start writing the pattern. Okay, so once I've got my initial sketch and idea finished, I move over to the computer and I'll start writing the sewing instructions. Okay, so the software that I use for the sewing instructions is called Adobe InDesign, and this software is strictly for layouts. So layouts of books, layouts of brochures, that's pretty much what it does and it does it really well. So on my screen is an instruction that I'm in the middle of writing. And as you can see, um, let's look at step number eight over here. I've just written each step's instructions and to the left of the step, I have a, a blank box with an X through it. So later on, when I go ahead and make the bag and I shoot my step photos, I'll come back and drop a photo in the corresponding box matching that step. Um, but for now, I, I don't have the photos prepared yet at this point. So I went ahead and I finished writing the entire pattern. And as you'll notice the blue text where it says right here, assemble the lining, that's just um, the section of the steps. So every step that follows that section is corresponding to assembling the lining. Okay, so after I have my pattern instructions fully written out, I'll move over to a different bit of software. This one's called Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Illustrator is for drawing. So this is where I'll draw my pattern pieces. So I've got a document opened up in Adobe Illustrator. This was something that I was working on for Court Club for the eyeglass case. And basically I just use my, I actually use a mouse. I'm a little bit old fashioned. I know a lot of people use um, a writing tool, a stylus, 
but I just like using my mouse. That's how I learned how to do it, and that's how I continue doing it to this day. And so um, if I know the size of my pattern pieces, I'll place a rectangle on my, on my artboard just so I can use that as a guide. And then I'll go ahead and draw some curved edges to it, and I can always remove the rectangle later. So for example, if I need to, to make the corner of a bag, I'll just draw using um, a tool and it, basically I could sit here for a few hours drawing the pattern pieces till I have all of them. So um, it's a little bit more in depth of a process but um, this is the software that I use to draw the pattern pieces and after I finish drawing the pattern pieces then it's time to cut fabric out and start sewing. Okay, so once I have the instructions finished it's time to get to sewing the bag. So while I'm sewing the bag I'm also taking the step photos. So normally the night before I cut out all of my fabric and interfacing and attach the fabric to the interfacing because it normally takes me two to three hours. So I like to have it done at least the day before and then so I can start the, the work day just by sewing. So as I sew each step, I have my camera ready and this is actually where I take the step photos, just right here. So I get the camera ready and I take a photo after I finish every single step. Um, by the time I'm finished with all the step photos, the bag is all finished as well. And then I'm ready to take those photos and edit them in Photoshop. Also, while I'm sewing, I take the, the written instructions that I have, print them out, and I'll actually make notes on the pattern. So maybe a helpful hint um, if I need to add something or change a measurement. So if I need to do maybe one and a half inches instead for the magnetic snap, I'll write that down and I'll transfer all of these written instructions later into my original InDesign file. Okay, after I've made my prototype bag and taken all of the step photos with my camera, then I move over to yet another type of software. This is called Adobe Photoshop, and the purpose of Photoshop is editing photos. So I'll take all of my step photos from my camera and input them into Photoshop. So on my screen, I've got one of my step photos from one of my older patterns and I'm going to edit this photo for the size of the pattern. So um, I'll need to make it a certain size to fit in my pattern template. So um, I'll just go ahead and do that. Sometimes the lighting on the particular photo is a little bit dark so I'll make some adjustments to that so I can make the photo lighter or darker. I can also put some text on the screen. So for instance if I want to call attention to the fact that you need to sew this with um, a half inch seam allowance perhaps. I'll go ahead and type that on the screen as well. So I can do all of those things in Photoshop and then I'll go ahead and open my pattern instructions and place those photos next to the instructions that I had already written. Okay, now that all my photos are edited, I'll go back into InDesign, which is where I had my instructions written, and I'll just drop all of those photos next to the step where they should go. So. Here's a pattern open on my computer screen and here's where I've dropped all of the photographs next to the correct step in the instructions. So if you recall from before, these boxes were just blank with an X through them and now they have all of the photos filled in. After the initial pattern is finished with all of the instructions and the step photos, then I'll send the pattern out to my pattern testers and I usually give them about three weeks to work on the pattern before returning the feedback to me. So the types of feedback that I'm looking for is if each of the steps makes sense, um, if the supply list is accurate. For instance, if I say that you need one yard of exterior fabric and maybe you needed a yard and a half, um, those are the kinds of things that I'm looking for and any kind of errors in the patterns, typos especially. Um, if they found, for instance, that I asked for them to place the magnetic snap one inch down from the top of the bag and they thought it would be better at one and a half inches. Those are the kinds of things that they let me know in the pattern instructions as well as the typical things like if everything printed out okay, um, if all of the steps were present and if everything made sense. That's the most important thing because um, the steps need to make sense to everybody and everybody no matter what skill level should be able to read them and make sense of the instructions. So I've got one of my tester emails open on my screen and these are just some of the comments that I received for a recent pattern test and so they just let me know um, for instance right here page 6 step 15 the third photo doesn't show leaving this, the 8 inch opening for turning so they're just letting me know that I need to add um, 
some notation on the photo, maybe text or an arrow showing how something is done in that step photo and any corrections. Um, for instance, right here, they say page nine, the heading says assemble the front pocket, but the instructions are for making the tabs. So just basic corrections that they're giving me and that's really helpful for me when editing the final pattern. Okay, so after I go through all of the tester notes, um, and I try to do that in the same day just so everything's fresh in my mind, but I'll open the original pattern instructions back up in InDesign and input any corrections. So if I've made any errors or typos, of course I fix those immediately. Um, but sometimes going through the tester notes, some of the feedback that I'm getting is subjective. So for instance, if they'll make a suggestion, um, I like to sew the flap this way, or this is what I did instead. I just have to take that into consideration with um, what I had in mind for the pattern in the first place. So I just sort of have to weigh in my mind, um, especially if there's conflicting um, feedback from the testers. Maybe some of the testers liked to sew it this way um, and they didn't like my other option that I gave. So I just have to kind of make the final call and decide what will go in the finished pattern. So I have InDesign open up on my computer and I just go ahead and change any of the text that I need to change, um, fix any of the typos, um, add anything if I need to add any helpful hints, which I usually place in red. So I'll do that based on the tester feedback that I've gotten. Okay, besides having the pattern finished, I need to take my camera. Usually I like to go outside and take photos of the bag. So we have a wooden fence next to our house and I like to hang the bags on the fence and take photos that way. We also live down the street from a school and the cement steps going up to the school is another place that I like to lay my bags out and take photographs, especially if the bag comes in multiple sizes. So if there's a small, medium and large bag, having them set out on the stairs is a good way that I can get all of the bags in the same shot. So usually it takes me a few hours to get the pictures that I like. Um, I prefer shooting outside so I can get some natural light and I also prefer an overcast day so that I don't have sunlight blaring on the project. So um, taking the photos is probably my least favorite part of this process just because um, I feel like I'm not so good and it takes me probably twice as long as it would take somebody who was better at taking photographs, um, but it has to be done because people like to see the photos of the finished projects. Okay, so at this point we're in the home stretch as far as preparing the pattern. There's usually a couple more things that I need to finish and as, as per usual, a lot of the things that I need to do are on the computer. So um, one of the things that I do to prepare a new pattern for release is get a blog post ready. So the blog post has information about the pattern it has all of the photographs that I've taken myself, so just different views of what the bag looks like. And I also post photos from my pattern testers. So I've got on my computer, um, my website back end open, and here's just some photographs. These are some of my own photogra photographs, and then all of the tester photos, and then I have the tester's name, and if they have social media, um, the link to their social media. So you'll see on my blog post, all of the tester photos and I always think it's really helpful and I'm appreciative to have these tester photos to post because as you can see everyone uses different fabrics in their project and sometimes I feel like the fabric can sort of change your mind about the sewing pattern maybe the bag that I made is not um, to your fabric taste but maybe you'll see it in one of the pattern testers versions and it'll change your mind and you'll really fall in love with the pattern so um, Preparing the blog post is always super important for getting um, the pattern ready for public release. Okay, last but not least, I get my website ready for the product listing. And so we usually shoot a trailer video for new patterns since we've been doing videos in the last um, almost one year. So um, Danny and I shoot trailer videos. Uh, we just shoot about a one minute video showing what the bag looks like. And I'll explain during the video what what details and techniques you'll learn. So for instance, if you'll be making a zipper pocket or an adjustable strap, I find it's helpful um, to have that presented in a video as well, just so people fully understand. And they can also get little sneak peeks of what the video looks like for that particular pattern. Okay, so here's my website back end and I've put the trailer video in. I've put some specific details about the pattern, like the finished size, 
how long the video is, and just pertinent details about that sewing pattern. And so all of that information, the trailer videos, information about the pattern will go into the product listing, and then it's time to make everything go live.